it may be a talk to them, huh? oh. you, you are like now. Maybe the end of the class or somewhere in the middle, like, huh? uh, End of the class, sir. End of the class. Oh. Just, but don't forget. Huh. Yeah. It means uh, how to follow the line. Uh, that's why I'll come sometime around 11. Uh, I can come at around 11 15. Uh, okay, in case if I forget anything. So good morning to everyone. We will wait for some time. Yes, we will wait for some time. So good morning. So good morning. So can I start with the class? So I'm not seeing any messages. One minute. So it's saying that light off is disabled. Uh, Miss messages, I can't see. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's saying light uh, light shot is disabled. Uh, the side yes, 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 yes. Route leather. Chat was not coming. Normally in the side it will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And power went here also it's not there. Mayank is not there, ma'am. No, he knows everything. Okay. You are live. That's all. Chats then if they are asking question, I'm not coming. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
Wait, and tell them that we look into it. Okay, one minute. We are not able to see messages because if you ask any questions, I will not come. That's why. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I have forgotten the name. Something about nuclei, right? Function of nuclei. So, if uh, nuclei is nothing but Plural of nucleus. And all of us we know nucleus that's and when it comes to eukaryotes, we have the membrane, nuclear membrane, which will protect our DNA. Right? So unlike prokaryotes, where there will not be any definite nuclear membrane. So that will be the function of the nucleus. It will provide suitable environment for the DNA. Right? So as we have cytoplasm, we have nucleoplasm also. So that's why it will provide the suitable environment. It will protect the DNA. Fine. So that should be the answer. The question was function of nuclear. For that I have given the answer. So what I will do is I will continue with the class. If you have any questions, uh, I will answer that one in the next class. No need to worry. Or we will see. Fine. So before going for that, important part related to biomolecules, related to your test, we will have a discussion. Now first and foremost thing here is, you can expect definitely question from structure of disaccharides. You can expect the question from structure of disaccharides. But whether... Uh, uh, Test on surface chemistry has been done. Uh, I am not getting that one. But for time being, take it down for biomolecules. So, structure of disaccharides. So, then, with respect to biomolecules, this is very important. Then you can expect one mark question with related to starch, glycogen, and cellulose, starch, glycogen and cellulose. Even you can expect two marks question also. So that's why we have the starch, glycogen and cellulose, especially bonding. Everything you should be knowing. So which type of bondings are present here, everything you should know. And when it comes to structure of disaccharide, already I have explained. Fine. So that's why we have the carbohydrate. Same way, you can expect for definition of anomers, epimers, dextrose. Okay? So these are some of the questions you can expect. Definition. Fine? Now in the same way when it comes to proteins. So as I have told, in the proteins we can expect jitter ionic structure. Jitter ionic structure of a given amino acid or glycine. So that question you can expect from the protein part. Then you can expect with related to denaturation. You can expect question related to denaturation. An example as we should give that is curdling of milk. Fine. So next with respect to proteins you can expect question on Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. Definitions. Fine. Now, along with that, examples. You should be seeing the examples for fibrous and globular proteins. Examples for fibrous and globular proteins. So, these are the, some of the expected questions. Along with that, some very rarely they have asked about essential and non-essential amino acid examples or definition. Fine. So that's where related to 
protein. Now when it comes to nucleic acids, when it comes to nucleic acids, question can be related to nitrogenous base, which is related to RNA, specific for RNA and specific for DNA. That question you can expect. Specific nitrogenous base related to DNA and RNA. Same logic with respect to sugar moiety related to DNA and RNA. So these are some of the questions you can expect. Same way nucleosides, nucleotides, definition, no structure, definition. Now when it comes to vitamins, when it comes to vitamins, as I have told, you can expect the question from deficiency disorders. You can expect the question from deficiency disorders. Especially night blindness. Especially with respect to night blindness. Then when it comes to clotting, vitamin K. Which vitamin is involved in blood clotting? That is vitamin K. Same as scurvy. That is related to vitamin C. Then you can expect rickets, osteomalacia. That is related to vitamin D. If they ask on rickets, you cannot just tell that it is due to deficiency of vitamin D. To be more appropriate, you should mention with related to children. Okay? Same logic, osteomalacia. You should mention it is in adults. Okay? So these are the, some of the questions you can expect from biomolecules. So this one will be for 3 marks and sometimes even for 4 marks. Fine? So if you have anything, uh, now you can do, uh, you don't waste your time in sending the message because I cannot see here. But you can focus on my class. Okay? So any doubts, you can send it to me later. So one minute, Murali sir want to tell something, one minute. Hello, good morning students. I think there is some issue why, you know, we don't know why it got disabled. So please continue today with this, uh, without, you know, sending the messages. We will see for the next class. Now we are not able to resolve it. Okay. Uh, sorry for that inconvenience. Another uh, thing that I wanted to announce, Sunday, this Sunday, that is tomorrow, there won't be any test. Uh, I, we thought we should uh, ask you people to relax at least one day freely. So we can relax this Sunday, no problem. As you know that again the lockdown has been extended for another two weeks. And also one more very important news that we wanted to share. Your first PU results will be announced on May 5th. Okay. And we are also planning to start our first PU online classes starting from Monday, that is May 4th. So if you know anybody, your juniors who are in 10th standard right now, you can spread this message about first few online classes. Uh, so that day, you may have different schedule for you people. So we have to plan you know, different schedules for first few and second few. See, we'll be sharing the schedule for you people. So you may get that notification by Sunday. Okay. Uh, yeah, May, May 5th will be your First PU results, uh, first PU results, uh, you will be knowing by how you will get to know that also we will let you know by Monday. Okay, but the government has uh, announced that by May 5th we have to announce the results. So we will uh, wait for the government guidelines accordingly, your results will be announced to you people. Good luck to all of you and have a nice weekend. So relax this Sunday. Bye bye. And also, okay, one, one thing I wanted to tell if somebody, you know really want to be very creative, you want to do something this Sunday, what you can do? You can create any video to one minute, two minutes, three minutes, maximum three minutes, okay? Or five minutes maximum. Anything whatever you wanted to do. It could be a subject that is maths, physics, chemistry or whatever, biology, any concept you can do or anything beyond that. It could be some fun, it could be song, whatever, okay? You have full freedom to create that video. And then share that video. You record it in your mobile. Now all of you are I think comfortable right now. And also you have access to mobile. So you can 
record it and share it with your mentors and we will identify which is the best ones and then see how to you know maybe we can put it into our portal or something like you know uh, we are planning first we want to see the creativity among you people i know many of you are very very creative probably uh, you know this is a kind of a competition this sunday for you people and we are not giving any guidelines what you are supposed to do what but it should be decent okay <laughs> Some, something you know uh, decent which we can share it with others with the parents with teachers with friends okay it could be subject or anything else extracurricular activities okay uh, it could be minimum 30 seconds 30 seconds to maximum 5 minutes okay i, I think you would have seen tiktok videos right maximum 1 minute so they convey a lot of uh, message within 1 minute so something like that so learners tiktok you can say whatever <laughs> okay thank you we look forward for your uh, participation thank you Thank you, sir. So, we will start with the class. Anyway, so I have given some of the important concepts on which you can expect the question for your exams. Fine? So, what I will do is, today we will start with new topic. Okay? So, anyway, I was expecting lots and lots of questions from you, but I can't see the question. There's no problem. So later you can ask. That means on Monday you can ask. Fine. So we are going to start with the chemistry in everyday life. Chemistry in everyday life. Right? Now all of us we know. Fine. Fine. So it got reconnected. So good morning students, it's back. Uh, whoever has got disconnected, you can connect it back. We'll start with the class. Fine? So we'll wait for them. One or two minutes. So what I will do is, we will start with the class. In meantime, you can inform to others who has got disconnected. Even they can come for live class. So when it comes to chemistry in everyday life, that's what I was telling. Here we are going to discuss about molecules or chemicals which will be used for curing a disease, which will be used for fight against the bacteria or virus, right? Since now we are going with Corona virus, right? So that's why I took the name of the virus. Fine? So that's where we have the chemicals. Antibiotics which are available in the market. They are nothing but chemicals. Some of them, they are isolated from organisms. And some of them, they have been isolated and then modified. Same way. Every day, all of us, we know, used to wash the hand. We used to take bath, Right? And whenever we are washing the hand, once again, now they are telling 20 seconds, we have to wash the hand, right? Even in FM radio, they will tell. So, 20 seconds, they will give. Tick, 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 timings they will give. So, that's where that soap or whatever washing cloths, we are using detergents. So, they are also chemicals. So, what I mean to tell you is, from daily basis, if you see, from the morning, until we go for sleep, everywhere we can see the chemicals. So those molecules we are going to study in chemistry in everyday life. Fine? So that's where we have the topic. 
So when it comes to examination point of view, with respect to weightage for the board exam, you can expect maximum 3 marks from this topic that is related to board exam. And when it is with respect to competitive exams, you can expect one question from this. So board exam, three marks. And with respect to competitive exam, you can expect one question from this particular topic. But when it comes to NEET exam, so for examination point of view, yes. But with respect, if someone is interested in going for medical field, so for them, this topic is very helpful. It will act as a foundation for that further study. Fine? So that's where we have the chemistry in everyday life topic. Chemistry in everyday life. Fine? So first we will have the discussion about the drugs. Now, when I am telling the word drugs, Everyone, we will raise our eyebrows. Huh? What? Drugs. That's what the feeling will come. Right? So, drugs can be for negative effect or drugs can be for a good purpose. Now, we are dealing with those drugs. It is for a good purpose. That means, we are dealing with the medicines. We are talking about the medicines. Now, when I am talking about drugs, so these are the small molecules. So these are the small molecules or chemical molecules which will have negative impact on our body or it will have positive impact or we will use these drugs for a good purpose or a bad purpose. Now when I am talking about medicine as I told it will be for a good purpose. Now if I want to define the medicine so I can tell that these are the drugs. Medicines are nothing but these are the drugs which will be used for therapeutic purpose. Which will be used for the therapeutic purpose. Now I am telling another word. Therapeutic. So therapeutic means to treat some disorder or disease. So that is nothing but therapeutic. Therapy. Right? So that's where we have the medicines. So what are medicines? Medicines are nothing but those drugs which will be used for the therapeutic purpose. So what do you mean by therapeutic purpose? Therapeutic purpose means for the treatment of something. Right? So that's where we have the word therapy. Therapeutic therapy. Fine? So now how these medicines they are going to function? That will be another question. How these medicines they are going to function. Before going for that, already some of these concepts, biology students might have studied, but for computer science students also, it will be an information. Now, we have a cell, and this cell, on their surface, it will be having the receptors. It will have the different shapes of receptors, right? So we will imagine this one as a cell and that's where we have the nucleus and all the organelles are present here and on the plasma membrane we can see the receptors. Now all of us we know at home we have Tata Sky or Dish TV, D2H, whatever it is. Now what will happen? Our TV, television will be inside the room, right? But we are getting signal from the outside. How it's possible? Imagine that our house as a cell. And whatever slab or walls are there, they are nothing but membrane. Now this Tata Sky, whatever this one uh, instrument which will be fit on the uh, outside on the slab. So that will act as a receptors. So whatever signal is coming from the satellite, they will catch that signal and they will send inside the house to the television by using cables, right? So that's how it's going to function. Now, that's where you can imagine that these are, I'm not getting that English word for, in Kannada we tell, Chaptri uh, Antahar okay na? So, not in scolding format. So that's where I'm talking about that umbrella type of structure, whatever they'll be installing. 
So same logic is applicable here also they will act as a receptors. Now we will be having enzymes or majorly hormones. Especially hormones. We have the hormones which will be released or which will be produced by organ and it will be released into the blood and they will bind to their respective receptors. They will bind to their respective receptors because hormones can have this type of shape. Means I am giving imagination this type of shape or hormones can be of this type of shape or hormones can be of this type. Now based on this, it's very clear that this will go and bind to this one, this will go and bind to this one and this will go and bind to this one. So depending on their specificity, depending on their shape, they are going to bind to respective receptors present on the cell surfaces. Right? So if I give the number, this one as 1, 2, 3, then I can tell that hormone 1 cannot bind to, if I, even I will give 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime as the receptor. So hormone 1 can only bind to 1 prime. Hormone 1 cannot bind to 2 prime or 3 prime. Same logic is applicable for 2 also. Hormone 2 can bind to only 2 prime. But it cannot bind to 1 prime and 3 prime. Same way we can tell for 3 also. Hormone 3 will bind to only 3 prime. That's where they are going to fit into the receptors. If this interaction cannot happen, then hormone cannot recognize those receptors. Right? So that's where we have the hormone receptor complex which will be formed. And by that, these receptors will send the signal inside, depending on which hormone it has bound. So what I mean to tell you is, each hormone, they will have specific receptors in the body. Each hormone, they will have specific receptors on the cell surface. So that's where, very important term here is, there is a specificity. There is a specificity with respect to hormone and receptors. Fine. All of you have understood. That is very important. Fine. Now, what I will do is, I will design a drug. It can be a synthetic hormone or it can mimic the hormone structure. So that's where I can design the drug. So now my intention is, Either I want to decrease the effect of my target hormone or either I want to increase the effect of my target hormone. Say for example in a diabetes condition, in some of the case we have type 1 and type 2 diabetes, right? So with respect to type 1, it will be insulin dependent, right? So it will be insulin dependent. When it comes to type 2, non-insulin dependent. Fine. So, we will go with type 1 where insulin dependent. Now, already as the name tells, there is a requirement of insulin. So, we have to give insulin injection. So, what it will do? It will go and it will bind to insulin receptors present on the cell surface. So, that's where when it comes to this type of interaction, we have agonist then antagonist, agonist and antagonist. Agonists are those chemicals or molecules which are going to bind to the receptor and it will enhance the effect of the receptor. Once again I will make it clear, agonists are those chemicals or drugs which will bind to the receptors and will enhance the effect of the receptors. So that's where we have the agonist. Antagonist means these are the molecules or drugs which will bind to the receptor 
and it will block the activity of the receptor. Whether I am clear? So that's where agonist they are going to enhance and this one they are going to block or inhibit. So that's where we have the agonist and antagonist. Whether I am clear? All of you have understood? So that's where we have the hormone receptor where there is a specificity. By using that information, we can design the inhibitors or medicines. So which can have either act as agonist or can either act as a antagonist. That's where one of the mechanism, how these medicines, they are going to function. Okay. So I'm talking about mechanism, how these medicines, they are going to function. This is one mechanism. How they are acting? By either inhibiting or by enhancing the activity of the receptor. That is one thing. Fine. So next, we have enzyme. Right? We have the enzyme. Already we have discussed about lock and key hypothesis in surface chemistry. And I told it will be repeated with respect to chemistry in everyday life. That's where we have the enzyme. Now, what lock and key hypothesis tells? Lock and key hypothesis tells that if you consider this one as an enzyme, this enzyme is going to bind to substrate. We have two substrate, S and S prime. And all of us, we can clearly tell that enzyme, this particular enzyme is going to be recognized by this substrate, not by S prime. That's where we have a specificity. That's where lock and key hypothesis talks about. Right? Now, we know that enzyme will have lots and lots of function. We have varieties of enzyme in our body. All are involved in catalyzing a particular metabolic reactions, metabolic pathway. Now we can have or we can design the drugs where either they can block the enzyme or they can induce the enzyme, right? So that's where we can have the inducers. That's what we were talking about, promoters and all, right? So that's where we have the inducers and inhibitors. That's where we have the inducers and inhibitors. So inducers, they are going to enhance the enzyme activity. Inhibitors, they are going to decrease the or they are going to inhibit the enzyme activity. So agonist, antagonist with respect to receptor, when it comes to enzyme, inducers and inhibitors. Fine? So all of you have understood? Now, since we have substrate and we have enzymes, I will design a molecule, I will design a chemical drug in such a way that this chemical will have this type of structure. I will mention this one as substrate prime. This is a synthetic molecule. This is natural molecule. Right? So regular substrate, synthetic substrate. So now if you observe it carefully, I have designed this drug in such a way that it has a part which can be recognized by the enzyme. It can be recognized by the enzyme. Now due to that, but one point I will make it clear. But it is not same as that of the regular substrate. There is some change. Right? There is some change in that structure. So now what will happen? When I am adding this particular molecule to the solution, when I will add this particular molecule that is S prime to the solution, it will be going bind to the enzyme. When it will bind to the enzyme, enzyme will not give any product because this is not a regular substrate. But instead of that, enzyme active site will be blocked where a regular substrate cannot bind now because already this one has bond. So that's what it will happen. Now what will happen? We have enzyme, it is bound by the S prime. So now it will lead to the formation of E and S prime complex, but there will not be product. 
so no product will be formed no product will be formed but when a regular enzyme and substrate they are bound when regular enzyme substrate they are bound they can give rise to enzyme and product so now if you observe it carefully when i have both in this solution when i have both in this solution even enzyme is there in that solution now there will be a competition between s prime and s for the same active site there will be a competition anyone can win but now it's a chance factor when s was alone there were no competitors so there was no chance factor but when s prime is also there in the same solution now comes the chance factor naturally amount of product formed will get decreased amount of product formed will get decreased so these type of inhibitors are called as competitive inhibitors these type of inhibitors are called as competitive inhibitors now i can define what i mean by competitive inhibitors so competitive inhibitors are those drugs or chemicals which will mimic the structure of substrate and it's going to block the enzyme activity or i can tell that competitive inhibitors are those drugs or chemicals which will compete with the regular substrate for the active site of the enzyme and it's going to inhibit the enzyme activity so that's where we have the competitive inhibitors all of you have understood fine so now this is one type of inhibitors which is there in the market same way i will go with another mechanism what for same enzyme and inhibitors only we have another type so where we have the enzyme we have the enzyme fine now the speciality of this enzyme here is on the one side it is having another binding site it is having another binding site now naturally this will be active site right all these things you have studied what do you mean by active site these are the part of the enzyme which is be recognized by the substrate they are called as active site now another one what i have drawn here is allosteric site or regulatory site allosteric site or regulatory site in the name itself it is the regulatory that means allosteric or regulatory site so that means these are the part of the enzyme which will be recognized by the regulators what do you mean by regulators regulators are those molecules which will going to regulate the activity of the enzyme which is going to regulate the activity of the enzyme right so now we will imagine we have one regulator okay now whenever this regulator is bound to allosteric site now enzyme active site will become a different one there will be change in the enzyme active site so that's where change in the enzyme active site conformation change so due to that now substrate cannot bind so that's where inhibition will happen or that's where regulation will happen same mechanism was utilized by designing the inhibitors so that's where we have the allosteric inhibitors that's where we have the allosteric inhibitors so what are allosteric inhibitors these are the drugs which will bind to allosteric site of the enzyme and it will inhibit the enzyme activity now please remember there is no competition between inhibitor and the substrate because inhibitor nowhere it is going to the active site it is moving to the allosteric site so that's where they are called as allosteric inhibitors Fine. Same way we have non-competitive, uncompetitive, and all, which is not there in your syllabus. 
for time being we should remember competitive and allosteric inhibitors fine so these are the two mechanism by which majorly a medicine is going to function so which are those two mechanism that is one is by inhibiting the or blocking the receptors and another one is by inhibiting the enzyme activity this is how a uh, medicine or drugs they are going to function fine so in that way now we will start with some of the examples now we will start with some of the examples that's where we have got first one as antacids first class of drugs are called as antacids so what do you mean by antacids in the name itself it is that they are going to decrease the acidity they are going to decrease the acidic environment where in the stomach so that's where they will be taken they will be inhaled whenever a person is suffering from acidic problem gastritis so that's where these molecules are very very important this type of medicines will be consumed by the humans very often not by everyone who is suffering from acidic problem right because we have practiced our lifestyle in such a way that where we are giving lots and lots of trouble to our stomach that's where it's going to lead to gastric problem right now when i am talking about antacids one of the antacid already we have discussed that was in your topic first year with related to s block element then we have discussed this one in surface chemistry also, where we have given this one as a suspensions suspensols right so that's where we have discussed one of the antacids so which is that one that is nothing but magnesium hydroxide solution suspension of magnesium hydroxide it is the suspension of magnesium hydroxide right so that's what we have discussed right which is also called as milk of magnesia i know many of you might have given the answer but i can't say sorry for that that's where we have the milk of magnesia which is also called as solution of which is actually a suspension of magnesium hydroxide a very good antacid same way we can use bicarbonates we can use bicarbonates which are also act as a antacids now bicarbonate a small a common one is nahco3 that is sodium bicarbonate because when i am talking about carbonate it is co3 minus 2 right so when h is there then it will become hco3 minus so carbonate ion bicarbonate ion so i am talking about sodium bicarbonate right so it will be dissociated as na plus hco3 minus na plus that is sodium ion and bicarbonate ion fine so that's where even bicarbonate will be used as a antacid now one question was there in the board exam question was justify that milk of magnesia is more efficient compared to bicarbonate as a antacid justify that milk of magnesia is more efficient compared to sodium bicarbonate as a antacid the answer is very simple when i am talking about bicarbonate they are highly soluble they are highly soluble so due to that there will be sudden increase in the ph of the stomach there will be sudden increase in the ph of the stomach that due to sudden increase it's going to stimulate our stomach cells to secrete more acid it will stimulate our stomach cells to secrete more acid because there is a sudden increase in the ph so therefore long term usage it may not be helpful 
that is related to bicarbonate right but when it comes to milk of magnesium that is magnesium hydroxide they are not highly soluble so now what will happen slowly they will be getting solubilized so due to slow dissolving property they are not going to increase the ph of the stomach suddenly so that's where milk of magnesia is a very good anti antacids compared to bicarbonate please remember so that is majorly due to difference in their solubility all of you have understood so that's where we have the antacids now if you recollect whatever i have told just now nowhere i told they will going to bind to anything nothing i have told as a chemical they are be acting as a base so when base is coming when acid is there there will be neutralization which will be happening there is a general reaction so therefore it's very well understood that these chemicals whatever i have told they are not going to target the cause they are going to attack the symptoms what are that symptoms symptom is acidity so they will decrease the acidity that's all but they are not targeting those cells or those molecules which are involved in secretion of acid that is h plus so therefore they are not targeting the cause they are targeting the symptoms therefore if you use a long term also it may helpful for time being not for the long term usage now due to this reason due to lots and lots of research now we have many drugs which are available in the market which can be used as antacids and which are much much more efficient compared to all these chemicals what we have discussed right so some of them is this is very important you can expect the question so that is cimetidin and ranitidin we have two chemical cimetidin and ranitidin we have two medicine now speciality of this medicine here is it is going to act as a it is going to act as a antagonist it is going to act as a antagonist for histamine it is going to act as a antagonist for histamine by binding to its receptor by binding to h2 receptor of histamine they will bind to h2 receptors of histamine sir what is histamine first tell me that one you are simply telling its receptor what is histamine okay fine day to day life we have observed all of us we have tasted mosquito bites right yaru ee mosquito tar kaskal de dori dira definitely no one is there every one of us we have tasted mosquito bite while watching movie will not be recognized but after some time there will be itching then we will say oh some mosquito has bitten us right so that's where we have the histamine that swelling that itching property is due to histamine these are the molecules produced in our body right so they are going to make that itching sensation that's where we have the histamine when you have cold repeated cough then syrup benadryl one of the drug which is a syrup is available so that is also acting against the histamine because histamine is involved there also nose block is there once again histamines which are the reason one of the reason for that particular thing right so that's where we have the histamine have a there this histamine is having two receptors one is actually more than that but according to your syllabus i am going so we have two receptor one is h2 and another one is h1 receptor h2 receptor and h1 receptor so whenever histamine okay fine we have histamine it can bind to either h1 or it can bind to h2 
So whenever it is binding H1 receptors, right? So that's where it will have the inflammatory effect. That's where it will have the inflammatory effect. As I told, there will be itching sensation. Then there will be swelling in that region which is called as edema, right? So all these things are nothing but inflammatory effect which will happen when histamine is binding to H1 receptor. Now same histamine, if it is binding to H2 receptors, it is involved in the acid secretion. It is going to stimulate the acid secretion in the stomach. It is going to stimulate the acid secretion in the stomach. That goblet cell one is there, which is going to involve in the secretion of acid. That's where H2 receptor is the one which is involved for that. Right? So that means I am talking about receptors, H1 and H2 receptor. So histamine is a molecule. It will come and bind to its receptor. Then it can have different effect based on which receptor it has bound. Right? Now when I am talking about antacids, Definitely, I am worried about acid secretion, not with inflammatory. So, I will make a specific drug which will bind only to H2 receptor. So, that's where I have cimatidine, ranitidine, which are very good antacids. Which are very good antacids. So, a very good example for antagonist. A very good example for antagonist. Because they will want to bind to H2 receptor and they will block the acid secretion. Therefore, it is a very good example as an antagonist. Okay? Same way, as I told, Benadryl is, can be one of the things. Same way we have Seldane. I will take your textbook this one only. Seldane is also called as Terfanadane. Okay? So, common name is and even Benadryl is a commercial thing, another molecule. So all this molecule will have the anti-inflammatory property. All these molecules will have the anti-inflammatory property. Fine? So where they will bind to H2 sorry, H1 receptors and that's where they will have the anti-inflammatory property. Where they will bind? They will bind to H1 receptors. So H2 receptor, H1 receptor. I think in your textbook, they might have not mentioned H1 and H2. They have mentioned two different receptors, but I am mentioning it as H1 and H2. Anything is fine. So no need to worry. Okay? So that's where we have the Seldane or Terfanidine or Benadryl. Even some more examples might be there in your textbook, which can be an example for anti-inflammatory drugs which can be an example for anti-inflammatory drugs fine so which will going to block the histamine receptors which will act by acting as the antagonist for histamine receptors okay so in that way we will move to next class of the whatever we have discussed is antacids and anti-inflammatory anti Fine. So, whatever we have discussed is antacids and anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, we will move to the next one. That means, neurologically active drugs. I am going as there in your textbook. Neurologically active drugs. Okay. Now, when I am talking about neurologically active drugs, in the name itself it is there. They are going to act on our neuronal system. Either they can enhance the neuronal activity or they can decrease the neuronal activity. So therefore they are called as neurologically active drugs. Right? Naturally, these drugs will be prescribed for a person who is under depression. Right? So this will be given for a person who is under depression or who is having stress, lots of stress. So who is having lots of stress. So 
So for those type of people, these drugs will be given. But one thing I will make it clear. When I am talking about antacids or anti-inflammatory drugs, most of the time we will take without taking the advice of the doctor. That is fine. But when I am talking about neurologically active drugs, it has to be taken under prescription only. Because we are playing with our central nervous system, our neurological system. Right? We should not take the chance. Now, and these drugs will be given only when it is required. Unnecessarily it cannot be taken. Today, I am not feeling like happy. I should not take antidepressants. For the law, because it will have lots and lots of side effects. So that's where we have the drugs which are called as neurologically active drugs. When these drugs will be given, when there is a depression or when there is a stress or when there is lots of pain, then also these drugs can be taken. Lots of pain which is not tolerable. Please remember, whenever there is a wound, we should not take painkiller. Right? So we have our own molecule which will be produced inside which can take care of this pain. If too much pain is there which is not tolerable then only we should take. Right? So that's where we have the neurologically active drug. In that, on this they have asked, so I will make it as important, that is tranquilizers. That is nothing but tranquilizers. Now, what is the definition of tranquilizers? So, tranquilizers are class of neurologically active drugs. Listen to me. Tranquilizers are class of neurologically active drugs which will be having calming effect. Which will be having calming effect without inducing the sleep. Without inducing the sleep which will be having calming effect. Right? Or you can tell that tranquilizers are those neurologically active drugs which can act as antidepressants. That is also fine. That's where we have the tranquilizers. Okay? Now, when I am talking about tranquilizers, here we have to understand two molecules. One is serotonin. One is serotonin. And another one is noradrenaline. Another one is noradrenaline. These are the two molecules which are produced inside our body. Serotonin and noradrenaline, they are going to stimulate our nervous system. They are going to stimulate our nervous system. If these molecules are produced at very high amount, then also it will be a problem. Right? A person will behave like a man. So that's where these molecule has to be produced in nominal amount. How much it is required. Normally our body will take care of all those things. But when they are in less amount. Right? So then we have to, we will go for a condition which is called as depression. So during that time, there will be some of the drugs which will be prescribed. Which is going to enhance the receptor activity to which these molecules is going to bind. Right? So that's where we have the some of the drugs which will enhance the activity. That is one mechanism. Another mechanism is we have some of the enzymes which can which is involved in degradation of these molecules. Now we are going to block that enzyme so that this molecule can stay in the blood for a long time. So these are the two mechanisms by which these drugs will act. Right? So in that, one of the drug is Iproniazid. One of the drug is Iproniazid. And even Iquanil. Even Iquanil. Iproniazid and Iquanil. In the same, I think even Phenelgin. Phenelgin is also comes under this category. Phenelgin. Okay, so among these, Iproniazid is going to act by enhancing the serotonin level, by decreasing its degradation. And other two will by enhancing the activity of noradrenaline. 
So that's where we have some of the tranquilizers which comes under this category. So these are some of the tranquilizers. Fine. So in the same way, another class of tranquilizers. This is one class. Another one is barbiturate derivatives. Barbiturate derivatives. Another class of tranquilizer. This is one, and this is one. So another class of drugs which are used for as a tranquilizer is barbiturates. So under this we have valium. But barbiturate is a class of molecule which is produced in the plants. So we are going to have the molecule which is going to mimic these things. So that's where we have the valium, which is a barbiturate derivative. We have the valium. Then I think veronal. Veronal is also there. So valium, veronal. These are some of the barbiturate derivatives which is also used as a tranquilizer. Fine. So that's where we have the tranquilizers. What are tranquilizers? Tranquilizers are nothing but neurologically active drugs. Right? Now, in that, some of them will be enhancing the serotonin level, some of them will be enhancing the noradrenaline activity. Now, when I am talking about ipronyazid, equaline, phenylgene, all of them they will be acting by enhancing the activity of these signaling molecules. Right? So they are all neurotransmitters, type of neurotransmitters. Now another class of drug is barbituric acid derivatives. What is barbituric acid? Barbituric acid is a molecule which is produced in some of the plants. So now we have valium, veronal, which is going to enhance the receptor to which this barbituric acid will bind and they are involved, act, they will act as a antidepressants. They will act as a antidepressants. That's where we have the one of the class of neurologically active drugs. There was one question on valium. In the competitive or good, I have forgotten. But question was related to valium. The question was very simple. To which class valium belongs to? To which class valium belongs to? Then you can see the, if it is competitive exam, you can see the option. Otherwise you can tell that tranquilizers. That's all. Okay? So if you have barbiturate derivative, then it is more appropriate. Anything is fine. So that's where we have the one mark question we can expect from this particular concept. That is neurologically active drugs. Anyway, I will stop here. Okay. So any doubts, we can ask tomorrow or Monday. So we, I will try to clear those doubts. Fine. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. Hmm? bye.